Are vanilla guns even worth using in Project Zomboid? Yes. Absolutely. And by almost any way you look at it. If you're all about role-playing, then keep in mind this isn't just America. This is Kentucky in the 1990s. I've been credibly informed that it wouldn't be at all weird for there to be a gun in every other house. It's also the apocalypse. So pick up a gun and get out there. Even if it does get you in trouble, you're going to have fun. If you're more focused on not dying and doing things efficiently, then a good shotgun massacre is second only to a walking burn in terms of clearing out an area. And while the shotgun can run out of ammunition, at least it isn't going to burn the whole town down before you loot it. If you're trying something further outside the box, guns may be critical to your run. Whether you're playing with ultra-strong zombies, zombies that infect you just by being near you, or 28 Days Later style sprinters, guns may be your ticket to survival and enjoyment. How do I fire a gun? Once you have your gun equipped, you need to aim by holding right mouse, and then you can fire by pressing left mouse. You should see colored outlines appear around zombies as you aim at them, provided you're within the maximum range of your weapon. If you're not seeing these outlines, you can turn them on by pressing escape, going to options, then in the display tab, there is a cursor section which has an option called aim outline. You want this set to any weapon or ranged weapon. I guess you could use guns with it off, but you'd have to eyeball your maximum range and you'd have no indication how likely your shot is to land. I don't recommend it and I play without melee outlines on. The aim outline doesn't just tell you which zombie you're drawing a bead on, or whether it's in range, it also gives you an indication of how likely your shot is to land based on the changing color of the outline. Green means you're probably gonna hit, while red means maybe don't waste the bullet. How do I actually hit zombies? Some guns can be handled well enough even with a low aiming skill, while others require significantly higher aiming levels to hit the broad side of a barn. Your proximity to the target also plays some role, and aiming for longer seems to improve the outline color. The biggest single contributor to missing a shot seems to be moving. As soon as your character starts strafing around, you're going to see those outlines go red, unless your aiming level is incredibly high. So to actually land your shots, you want to pick the right gun for your aiming skill level, and you want to plant your feet before you start shooting. How do I reload? Guns come in two varieties, which I will simplify as those that load from a detachable magazine and those that don't. Guns that don't use detachable magazines, such as a double barrel shotgun or a revolver, you can right click the gun in your inventory and you'll see an option to load it, provided you have the appropriate ammunition available and unboxed in your inventory. Alternatively, and much more simply, you can just press R and your character will load whatever gun is in their hands. For guns that use detachable magazines, you have a few ways to get ready. You can right click on a magazine in your inventory and select insert bullets. Then if you have a gun without a matching magazine inserted into it, you can right click on the magazine and select insert magazine. This is a perfectly acceptable way to sequentially load several magazines, but this is definitely not going to be your first choice for managing your loadout in combat. If you press R while you have a gun in your hand, your character will eject the magazine, whether it's empty or not. If there's a different loaded magazine in your inventory, it will load that magazine even if it has less bullets than the one you just took out. Note if there are multiple loaded magazines, it does not necessarily load the one with the most bullets. If there's no loaded magazine in your inventory, but there's a loaded magazine in one of your bags, then a single press of R will transfer the loaded magazine to your main inventory, and then you will need to press R again to actually insert it. Note that this means your character would rather insert a magazine with two bullets left that's in their main inventory, rather than getting a full magazine out of their bag. If you start doing tactical reloads in the middle of a fight, this can become a real problem. If there's no loaded magazine in your inventory, your character will eject their current magazine, load it or not, top it up with available bullets, then insert it back into the gun. Oh, and if at any point your gun jams, pressing R won't fix it, even as your character busies themselves with changing a magazine, ignoring the real problem. Going into all the nuances here makes it seem complicated, but it isn't simple. And you don't want to be slapping in magazines with just two or three bullets mid-fight. In my opinion, your better bet for handling this is to avoid pressing R and instead to hold R to bring up your context-specific radial menu. From this menu, you can load any magazines for the gun you're holding that are in your inventory. You can eject a magazine from your gun, or you can insert a magazine into an empty gun. And using this method, you can see how many bullets are loaded in the incoming magazine, and it will actually fish the magazine out of a bag and load it without missing a beat. Even more importantly, this menu will tell you if your gun is jammed and let you clear it with a click. It will also let you rack your gun, which you may need to do manually from time to time if you interrupt your loading animation. So in summary, it takes a little more time to manage your guns using the Hold R radial menu, 
but I find you're going to be better off by having that extra level of information and control in what you're doing. If you do prefer using the radial menu, there's an option to remove the pop-up delay. Under options and accessibility, there's a checkbox that will make this radial menu appear whenever you press R without requiring the short hold time. That was for guns that use detachable magazines. For the rest, guns that use internal magazines, cylinders or breech loaders, you can probably get away with tapping R to reload any missing bullets or shells. Note that with the semi-automatic JS2000 shotgun, if you try to jog after you've just fired a shot, you will interrupt the animation of your character pumping the gun and cycling the next round into the chamber. You can either press X to pump the gun, just as you clear a jam, or you can use the radial menu. How do I carry my guns? Rifles and shotguns are slung on the character's back, preventing the use of a melee weapon in that slot. Pistols and revolvers cannot be carried on the back, and they cannot be assigned to belt left or belt right either. The only way to have a pistol or revolver ready to draw at a moment's notice is to equip a holster or a double holster, which you find in the world, usually on a zombified member of law enforcement. How do I actually kill things with my guns? While at the end of the day you can just sling lead at the Walking Dead, there is some nuance to the system. Best I can tell, Zomboid deals in hits and crits. In fact, if you turn on debug mode, you can even see the game has calculated your crit percent chance every time you pull a trigger, even if the gun isn't ready to fire. Crits do so much more damage than hits, that you can expect a crit to one-shot regular zombies, even with the least powerful firearms, whereas the same zombie may be able to survive three, four, or even five hits. Given the fairly high percentage chance of critting zombies, often above 50%, this actually means you're basically just staggering zombies with bullets until you land that crit. Given the importance of crits, it's useful to know how they work. At the most basic level, a higher aiming skill gives a greater crit chance. This is always true, but different guns do offer different bang for your buck, some having significantly higher base crit chance, and others scaling more with your aiming skill. Until very recently, either due to a design choice or gremlin in the code, the game developers had guns getting an increased crit chance on more distant targets. Since build 41 point something something, you now see that increased crit chance as you close the to the target, with point blank shots often having extremely high crit chances. Additionally, if the output log generated in debug mode is correct, then you actually gut your crit chance by moving while firing. Even that you've already significantly lowered your chance to even just hit the target while moving, this means firing while strafing about is doing double duty and screwing you over. It seems like there's also a crit bonus when shooting a zombie from behind. This doesn't seem particularly important in single player, where zombies are almost always facing you, especially once you've cracked off a few shots. But if the same formula is used in multiplayer, then it may actually be worth catching zombies in crossfire. So in summary, your best chance to actually kill zombies with your bullets is to have as high an aiming skill as possible, get as close as possible, and to fire while you're stationary. Bonus points if you can sneak up and shoot them in the back of the head. How do I upgrade my guns? To add or remove any weapon part from one of your guns, you need to have a screwdriver in your inventory. Certain parts only work with certain guns, and some parts are competing for the same upgrade slot. Attachments make your gun heavier, except for the ones whose sole purpose is to make the gun lighter. As a general rule, attachments are better than not having attachments, though at the moment the bayonet and the gun lamp attachment don't do anything. Scopes in the 2x, 4x and 8x variety increase your gun's maximum range, but they also increase its minimum effective range. At least, that's what they're supposed to do. While testing for this video, I confirm that, yes, the bonus range offered by the scope is incredibly apparent, more or less tripling the range of the longest rifles using an 8x scope. However, while the wiki states that the scopes increase the minimum firing range, I'm not really seeing that in my testing. I've melted several M14s in my ongoing sprinters run, and my experience was that after a zombie closed within a round pistol distance, you would miss almost every shot with an 8x scope, and you're better switching to a pistol. I haven't done that for a couple of months though, and as I test things in debug mode now, even testing with zero mods on, I'm not sure I could tell whether I'm using an 8x scope or not once I get up close to a zombie. Even with a fairly modest 6 aiming, my character is still reliably blowing away arms up charging zombies despite the scope. So my take is definitely that, if the gun can have a scope on it, put a scope on it. For the shotgun, I believe the general consensus is that the choke tube full is the way to go, and the choke tube improved might actually be a downgrade. Generally speaking, whatever you do, it's still a shotgun, and it's still gonna slap. On the topic of shotguns, they can also be modified by sawing them off. This makes the guns a little lighter, significantly reduces their range, but also makes them easy to land hits with, especially at the very low levels of aiming. How do I repair my gun? 
to repair a damaged gun, simply right click it in your inventory and you'll see the option to repair. You'll need a certain level of aiming based on the gun you want to repair and you'll need a second copy of that gun which will be consumed by the repair process. If you have more than one gun that could be used for the desired repair, as best I can tell, the game will just cannibalize one of them at random. So you might be better off micromanaging your inventory a little bit and just having the gun you're willing to break up. You used to have to remove attachments from guns or lose them, but that seems to be fixed now. Where do I find guns? Guns can be found on zombies, in random homes, police vehicles are a highly visible early option for guns, they can be found in great quantities in gun stores and military checkpoints. Note that the different locations for guns will favour or even exclude different varieties. A Louisville military checkpoint, for example, is not a good place to look for civilian or police weapons and ammunition. What does reloading do? The reloading skill lets you load bullets or shells into guns and magazines faster, and lets you change magazines faster. I find this less of an issue for guns using detachable magazines, as the switchover between preloaded magazines is still pretty fast. How do I level reloading? By loading bullets into magazines or into guns. That's it. Find a shotgun, sit down and just load and unload the same six shells. You can do this task while you're waiting for the weather to clear or while managing your character's sleep schedule. I know you can get a mod that will literally just have your character load and reload a gun over and over again. Gotta say, this isn't one of the game's best implemented skills. How do I level aiming with shotguns and by shooting multiple zombies at once? With one well-placed shotgun shell, you can kill four zombies and get roughly the same XP as you'd get from firing about 16 low caliber pistol bullets. Just gather up a group of zombies and hold fire until you're getting juicy quad hits and your aiming will increase rapidly. If your character started with aiming levels and the associated XP boost, you could hit aiming five very, very quickly. After level 5, both aiming and reloading skills suddenly hit a wall. Not only do they require more XP per level, just as other skills do, but there is a stealth nerf in place by which you only earn around 37% of the XP compared to what you are getting in levels 0 through 5. What this means is, especially if you're playing a police officer or a veteran, it's very reasonable to hit level 5 aiming and reloading within the first day or two of play. But after that, things will slow down. What Moodles affect guns? Panic and stress do affect gunplay, but their impact is rather limited. The crit chance reduction from panic seems negligible because it's so small, and the damage decrease from stress isn't that big a deal because, as mentioned, you're mostly killing through crits anyway. I have no doubt it's better to go into a combat free from Moodles, but it isn't like melee combat where once you stack a few Moodles you can be doing way less than 5% of your regular damage. Obviously any Moodle that slows you down is terrible, and anything that shrinks your vision cone can also be bad when you're trailing 300 angry zombies. I hope you found this guide useful. Subscribe to the channel for more guides and gameplay.